Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. Today we're going to be talking about Utah's economic future. A recent editorial in the Salt Lake Tribune said that Utah's future economy would be improved by developing more wilderness area. Well, there are two schools of thought on that. We will address both of them later in the program. But first, we want to talk about which came first, the chicken or the egg, economic development or infrastructure. It's always a problem, particularly in rural counties. Utah is very blessed because we have a community impact fund managed by an obscure group called the Community Impact Board. And they make things like that happen out in rural Utah. Here with the story is Malia Bascom. Well, Chad, to answer your question of which came first, in the case of the Permanent Community Impact Board, the answer is both. That may sound strange because you might think that one, by necessity, would need to encourage the other. But it's the job of the board to help infrastructure and industry work together to benefit all residents. The Community Impact Board allocates uh, mineral lease funds that are generated through royalties from the extraction of coal, gas, oil in the state of Utah. And it's designed to help impacted communities. Those impacted communities are general rural communities, and so most of the funds go to help in projects of all different nature, water, sewer, town halls, ambulances, fire stations, throughout rural Utah. Oil and gas extraction can be seen throughout the state, as evidenced by pumps and refineries. But the lion's share of the oil and gas in the state comes from the Uinta Basin. For communities in these areas, the impacts of the mining are mitigated by the money that the counties receive as royalties from the resources that are taken out of the ground. There is a lot going on in Uinta County in the, in the form of energy development. We feed the golden goose. All of those companies, when it's on federal land, actually pay a royalty fee to the federal government. Half of that royalty fee comes back to the state of Utah, and part of that comes to the Community Impact Board. The funds that allow the board to support infrastructure projects with industry dollars are meant to be perpetual. First, resource extraction companies pay into the fund, and then those dollars are available for community projects that are approved by the board and can come in the form of low interest loans or grants. With loans, it perpetuates that fund. The problem with the grants is it diminishes the fund. But so the more zero interest loans, the money's going to be repaid even if it's zero interest. So the money's there in perpetuity for uh, forever. And so I think the fund needs to be promulgated because of that. So your zero interest loans, your two and a half percent loans are very important to the fund. The grants are very important to the communities. They provide funding for projects all across the state of Utah and a lot of our areas don't have the funding or the money that they need to develop certain projects. So after they have put together their justification, their planning, their engineering, they can apply to the Community Impact Board for assistance with that funding. The Community Impact Board is made up of representatives from across the state who are charged with deciding which projects can receive those grants or loans from the fund. I've learned that it's a whole process. It's the state, it's the state entirely, and we deal with issues within all the counties, and as you deal with those within the communities and the counties, it's a, a statewide issue, and hopefully we do it fairly and equally, and that the whole state receives a benefit from these mineral lease monies rather than just a few communities. For the county seat, I'm Malia Bascom. Thanks, Malia, for that report. Uh, once again, there are lots of things that go on at the county level of government that people just have very little uh, understanding of, but the impact they have is great, and the CIB is one of them. Well, we're going to switch topics. When we come back, we're going to start a roundtable discussion with our guests, and that roundtable discussion will be involving uh, wilderness and its impact on Utah's future. And we'll be back with the county seat in just a minute. Would you spend an extra day in Utah Valley? Stay 
one more day. Visit utahvalley.com to make reservations. Utah Valley, bring everyone together. yourself in Logan, Utah. We do winter right. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration. CITLA manages 3.5 million acres of Utah lands with the express purpose of furthering the education of Utah students while promoting local industry, oil and gas, even residential development, all at the same time. Through the careful use of trust lands, we distributed more than $22 million to Utah schools last year. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration, building the state's permanent school fund. If you look up epic in the dictionaries, defined as heroic, majestic, or impressively great. Here in Kane County, Utah, we don't need a dictionary to tell us that. We live it every day. Stop reading about life and start experiencing it in Kane County. ATV adventures, Jeep excursions, hike a world where the Old West was yesterday and tomorrow is just over the horizon. Kane County, Utah, where epic is more than just a word, it's our way of life.